Hello, Almal. Good evening. It is great for me to see you again. Um, so, don't <laughs> excuse. So, just um, before we start, I just want to make a few announcements. Firstly, um, welcome. I said that already. Secondly. Uh, we have started already with Bron again. So Bron is op dinsdag on the ses hier in hierdie vertrek. And what we do at Bron is we study the scripture that we are preaching on just a little bit deeper and a little bit further. And um, at Bron we especially ask the question, but how does this text ask us to go and live? So as wil a praktiese a volgende stap kind of probeer neem by Bron. Okay, so dieper in hart en gedagtes, maar dan ook verder voor en toe. Right, so um, come and join us for that. I'm sure you'll have a blast there. We really think of that space as kind of the space where we dream about stuff to be different and then do it. Okay, so come join us. We know that it's so important for people to find a local church to link into a faith community because that's actually to a, to a very major extent what carries you through um through tough times. Okay, so, uh, dit gaan ons focus wees vir twee sonde. Um, ons gaan nog steeds aangaan met die Onse Vader, ons gaan nog steeds aangaan soos ons aangaan. We are, uh, we are going to move our space to the hall. So, die volgende twee dienste gaan in die saal wees. Um, but uh, you don't have to worry about that, we'll set it up there. Um, so come with enthusiasm and come with a welcoming um, spirit because it is important. There's already a, new, a, a few new faces that I see here. In yeah, that is so belangrijk that allemaal says moet voel jij werd die. Okay, lekker. Lastly, I want to introduce uh, Pastor Bongani Ngesi and his wife Nandi and the son that's not here this evening, John. So um, we've been serving on a Campus Ministries Forum Committee and by serving together we became friends and it's for me a privilege, Bongani, to just have the absolute like yeah, it's just to ask you and to like, he, he's helping me out and, and because I had an interesting weekend that I'm not going to talk to you about now. Um, Sue Bongani, yes, thanks so much and really excited to see you here and to hear your voice and to hear how you teach the word of God and thank you for um, letting your husband do it, Nandi, and then thank you for your friendship, man. I really appreciate it. Um, firstly, before we give over to Bongani, I want us to praise the Lord with our offerings. So kom ons die nere met ons offergave en dan daarna gaan ek vorm gee. i 
Dear Lord, we thank you tonight that we can gather at Kopanong. Lord, a, a place where I truly believe, Lord, you've put missionaries, a place where you will really make a gateway, Lord, for people of different kinds of ethnicities, of cultures, of genders, of different walks of life, economic status to come and meet together. Thank you, Lord, that you just love us as we just meticulously sang just now. Um, what is men that you are mindful of? we grateful, Lord, for you and what you've done on the cross for us. In Jesus' name, amen. We may be seated. My name is Bongani. And uh, Chris, I know you are trying to hide my dumbbell, but I just, oh. <laughs> Hi, guys. Uh, my name is Bongani, and I'm with my beautiful wife, Nandi, here. Uh, we couldn't come with our little boy because he was going to be naughty, and then you guys were going to be angry just before we do anything uh, in this space. And so thanks again for allowing us the opportunity to come and minister the word of God together, and um, what an honor really it is uh, to be able to do just that. Chris, let me know that you guys are busy with a series called Reorientation 2021, something to that effect. Uh, how can we really experience the kingdom of God or uh, practice our Christianity under lockdown? And um, 
while I'm waiting for this to switch on, I thought it is on. But you guys won't believe before I start. You guys look so amazing. I wish I really was wearing my shorts as well. Uh, I feel like I'm overdressed. <laughs> uh, how I found out that the service is right now um, was I had a puncture. And so I was driving past just to the garage to like, you know what, let me quickly go and sort this puncture issue out. And then I saw this car parked outside. Then I called Chris and I said, Chris, I think it's this church that's about to start. <laughs> and then Chris said, yeah, no, it starts at five o'clock. So then we quickly had to rush, organize our baby to actually just uh, be someone to, 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 to look after our baby. So now we're here, now we're here, now we're here. I'm excited about the word of God. So Chris just, and yeah, the Kopanong leadership tasked me to focus on a phrase in the Lord's Prayer that really touches on the, um, you know, thy kingdom come element. So if you have your Bible, I'd like to believe, I don't know where you have it, whether it's on your phone or the physical Bible, um, just to go to uh, Matthew chapter 6, verse 10, just to read one liner, and then you take your other finger, you put it at Isaiah 11, verse 1 to 5. I think my wife thought she's going to just sit. I'm going to ask her to come and just read for us. We do it like that in our church. Come. <laughs> she reads better than me anyway. Okay. That's why I'm doing it. Hi, guys. That's not entirely true. And he knows I don't really generally like speaking in front of people, but, well, usually just enjoys putting me out there. So, Matthew chapter 6, verse 10. <laughs> so, um, I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. It reads, May your kingdom come soon. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Okay, then, then we move over to Isaiah chapter 11 verse from one verse 1 to five. to 5. And I'm reading from the New King James Version. And it reads, There shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. His delight is in the fear of the Lord, and he shall not judge by the sight of his eyes, nor decide by the hearing of his ears. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor, and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall slay the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt of his loins, and faithfulness the belt of his waist. All right. Thus, we read. Lord, thank you for your word. We pray that today you just make it practical in our lives. Thank you for the opportunity as well, in Jesus' name, amen. All right, I heard some people say amen, and I was like, yes. There was somebody that will say amen. So, Chris, you gave me 30 minutes, and I'll try to stick to it. When I hear the alarm goes, doo -doo -doo -doo, then I know my time is up. All right. All right, not too long ago, sorry, I'm, I'll tell a lot of stories just to explain um, my points. The first scripture, obviously it was one line. The second one, I will not go that much into it, but I will extract some principles from it. So if you go home, you will read it maybe for yourself, and then you go very theological about it. Is it okay? All right. Yeah, so not too long ago here on campus, I was going to the printing shop, and the people who work in the shop, they knew that I am like a minister of religion, I am a pastor. Um, and so I went there just to go and print and I experienced that as I was in the shop that the people were very excited that the pastor is now in the shop. 
So now everyone started talking about these masks, how they need to be taken off, and we need coronavirus to just disappear. The one lady was just reading her scriptures and quoting and everything. So it was like a mini church service going on in that space. And I was just like, okay, I'm, I don't want this to happen right now. But what I soon realized as I just was listening to the, the people who were so excited to have me right there, uh, it was that I think people feel like they are trapped with the masks and that they can really not do a lot as Christians. And, and, and I, it really got me thinking the idea that, you know what, before COVID-19, we thought we had these big weights that we could lift, like 25s. I don't know if you know 25 kilo, uh, kilogram weight. It's like these big things that we could do, these big things we could do for God. Now it's coronavirus. We cannot really do uh, big things for God. And so that's why I just thought I bring this little dumbbell of mine <laughs> to say God has actually given us some room also to move around in coronavirus we can still do something that is significant for him, for his namesake. And so this dumbbell, it will make sense later on, but I just thought like we can still lift our dumbbell even in the coronavirus time. So this question, right, of the fact that we can do good as Christians in the world, can we still live a good life, a good Christian life, during this coronavirus, during these times where we are really restricted. And I think today's sermon or message will really try to stir us into the direction to say, look, uh, we are not that bound. We still have these dumbbells that we have. By the way, this dumbbell was given to me by my brother-in-law, and I've just kept it there, you know. I've never used it before. <laughs> I think back in his time, he used to use it. You see how old it looks and stuff like that. But I just think like, yeah, maybe it's, it's time for us to just take out our dumbbell again. <laughs> when we think about the Lord's Prayer, guys, really I want to go to the heart of what the scripture really is all about. Um, it really, Jesus teaches his disciples something that is important with the prayer. He's not just giving them a method of how to pray because a method would be something that is very fixed. You can apply it only in specific situations and etc. etc. But Jesus was giving his disciples a paradigm. That's good English word, a paradigm, a way of thinking about their relationship with God. And so a paradigm you can use in many different scenarios in many different ways. And the disciples of Jesus we're living in a time where there was really, you know, it was tough to really express your Christianity. And so Jesus was then giving them this paradigm in terms of how to think of yourself as a child of God. And what I truly believe about this scripture was that Jesus was, I know Chris dealt with the first two lines, uh, just teaching his disciples that they do have a father out there who really cares for them, who's looking out for them. And now coming specifically towards this specific line of thy kingdom come, your kingdom, meaning the kingdom of God, his kingdom come. Guys, I think it's really important what Jesus is really trying to line, uh, outline for his disciples at this specific time. I think, you know, there's one way which you can read the scripture your kingdom, so meaning it is Jesus, and then you quickly isolate yourself from the experience of the kingdom because, by the way, it is his. But from the little that I know about the Bible, I think the Bible says that we belong to Jesus. We belong to God. We are his children. We, we are like, sorry for using business term, we are like shareholders in his kingdom. And so I think there's a difference between somebody who has shares in a company and somebody who just comes, they don't really, it's not their own thing. I want to say the kingdom of Jesus is, the, is your kingdom as well. You have a responsibility to take out and, play, and, and really do some things for God even during this coronavirus time. 
See, if, it, if you did not belong, then it would have been another story. But the word of God says that you are a child of God. And God has entrusted the kingdom, his kingdom, to myself and you. And so that's the paradigm which Jesus is bringing to his disciples to say it doesn't matter whether it's coronavirus or whether it is really a tough time. We are in this kingdom thing with God with all of our hearts. Now, I think it's important for us to really get the context of why would Jesus really be saying this type of thing. So now, it is important that we then go into the role of chapter 6 and, you know, try to see what are some of the topics which Jesus was really addressing there. Some of the topics, must I stand still for the camera? Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, I tend to move around and do all that type of thing. Is that fine? <laughs> I got Chris's blessing, so I'll do it. <laughs> the first thing which Jesus starts to touch on in chapter 6, he's speaking about giving to the needy, right? So such an important thing to, to do when you give to the other, Jesus says, let your right hand not know what your left hand is doing. And so I think the crux there is that in this kingdom, when we do things sometimes, do not be out there like, yo, we are doing this good things, these big things, and all that, and, you know, people for, you, for them to praise you and stuff like that. I think that's maybe one way to look at it. But I think also the other way which I like is when you give something to somebody, don't ask questions about what you gave. You know, sometimes you give something to someone, and then you're like, please don't use it this way and, and that way. No, no, when you give, stop messing and meddling with what you gave. Because in the first place, your heart was just to give. If it was in my church, I would say, look at your neighbor and say, don't interfere once you've given. But I will leave you. <laughs> Some of you are like, yeah, I want to try it. <laughs> Second topic which Jesus touches on, he speaks about this whole concept about fasting. Fasting is basically in the Bible, time, Bible times, people would just go for many days without eating food and stuff like that, all right? So, yeah, there's, there's a lot of different ways in which people believe about fasting. Some would say, as New Testament believers, we don't fast anymore, and it's, it's fine. I think there's not a contention about it. But I think there's something which is important for us to note about fasting because we are trying to learn the context in which Jesus is speaking about this. I don't know if you guys have experienced it, but in coronavirus time, lockdown, you would think that people are the most closest to God because everything is locked down. But unfortunately, people are the most isolated from God. And I think the principle of fasting is teaching us something. It is important for us to really, at times, just retreat and connect with our Father and our God. See, I know in the times that we are living in, even as Christians, there's so much that we can do on the internet and things that we can do. And we actually experience that now we are neglecting God, the things of God, reading the Bible. We are just about Twitter and, and all of those wonderful things. So I think um, as children of God, there's really an, an opportunity during this time to also just retreat and just really connect with God, have a quality time with him while things are the way they are. Third topic which Jesus touches on in this wonderful text is he speaks about the treasures that we have in heaven. And I think I like this one the most. The fact that we should not be investing, he says, our lives in things here in the earth where it can really, things can happen to it. But Jesus is saying, invest it in heaven. I think my little understanding about this text is that I think Jesus was saying our whole lives, everything that we have, our studies, our relationships, things that we do, because we are heirs of God, we are sons and daughters, it all belongs to God. 
And it is actually a wise way to live, knowing that God is the one who will fend for your life if your life belongs to him. And I know sometimes we tend to look at our lives and we say, you know, there's compartments about my life that belongs to me. Others belong to my family. That one belongs to my boyfriend. <laughs> that one to my wife. But how about we maybe do a paradigm shift and say our lives 100% belongs to God. You know what's the beauty about that? It means if you are going through coronavirus time, lockdown, things are not so t good, it means that God is then forced to look after you. Yes, he looks after other people, it's true. But you, especially you, Kaspan, he will look after you. <laughs> uh, you're not laughing at my Trevor Noah joke. <laughs> <laughs> and the wonderful thing that Jesus also touches on about this whole thing about treasures in heaven, he speaks about the fact that, you know, uh, we should not be servants of money, right? He says you can only have one God, money or God. You choose. You cannot have two. And I think the important principle I take out of this is I think we need to choose God, and make money the servant of our lives. See, some of us, we are serving money. It's our God, and God is just the side thing that we do. You know, our, our ambitions, that's what we serve. That's what we go after. And then God is just the side thing that I do. But I think what Jesus was saying there, no, no. If you are in my kingdom, you go with everything. And then you take, I'm your God, and then use money to love people and to serve God. I don't know what you are studying, but I want to say, serve God and let that thing that you are using, that you are studying, let it be a servant, let it be a tool for you to glorify God in it. The last thing which Jesus touches on in this chapter, he speaks about the fact that we should not worry you know, he speaks, he's, and he points like to little birds that flies out there. He's like, do they have a chief? Is there somebody that looks out for them? Actually, they don't. But God says, I, your father, I take care of those birds. I make sure that they eat. I make sure that they, that they survive, that they are okay. And I think God was kind of looking at 2020 that time when the scriptures were written. And God was saying, you don't have to worry. I will take care of you. When, once you are done with your studies, when you are, once you're done with whatever task you are busy with here at Kopanong, God said, I will take care of you. Even while you are busy, he will take care of you. Don't be anxious of nothing. Don't allow worry to enter your heart this year. God will take care of you. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. It's a paradigm shift. It's not a method. It's a way of knowing and of living that God, you are his son. You are his daughter. You are, his, you are working for him and you belong to him. And God has got your best interest at heart. Wow, I don't know what that does to your heart, but to mine, it takes a lot of pressure off to know that I am serving a God who is really in control of things, that I don't have to worry about everything. Now, it's that part where I need to tell you a story. <laughs> in the townships, you know, when there's going to be a funeral, there's this thing they call a tibello. Basically, it's like a memorial service, night vigil type of thing. Now, on that day, Everyone else comes that knew the person, and they're now going to tell about the life of the person that died. Now, at this specific space, people will even tell lies. Oh, you are such a wonderful person. Oh, you did these beautiful things. But I think it's just like they're doing it for the sake of just, you know what, giving the person dignity and stuff like that. But I don't know if you guys are on 
you Facebook and follow the trends. But there was one uh, night vigil that went wrong where the aunt said, this was a lie. This thing that you were saying about this person, you were doing this type of thing. And so, so you just, just go and follow up about it on Facebook. It's very interesting. <laughs> now in every night vigil, if you go to a night vigil ever, there's a song that you're going to find that they sing. It's very common and it's sung in English. They are blushing. Why are you blushing? <laughs> and the song goes, I'm going home. I'm going home. I'm going home. I'm going home. I'm going. Those are the guys. To die no more. And then the lady will say, To die no more. To die no more. To die. I promise you, if you go to any night vigil and you sing that song, you, you people are going to support your song, okay? You'll have like people backing you up because it's like a very popular song to sing. And I just thought I want to reflect about it because it speaks about going home and it speaks about this beautiful place that is in heaven, you know, and we're speaking tonight, today and tonight about his kingdom that we really want to come, you know. And I think thinking about this wonderful song, it has a really beautiful tune and there's really parts for ladies to go in and parts for guys to go in. Let me just quickly look at my time. 13 minutes, you guys think I can still make it? Chris, I'll make it, don't worry. <laughs> I want to quickly reflect about the theology of this song, even though you don't know it, but we believe certain things that this song is also saying. It says, I'm going home, that the truth is that um, as a child of God, when you believe in Jesus Christ, you put your faith in him. There's nothing that you have to do. It's just you put your faith in him. Then you get an automatic ticket to go to heaven, which means you are guaranteed a place in heaven. You will meet with your maker one day, which is an amazing thing. I think we don't celebrate it even enough when people come to salvation. All right? That part, 100%. And if there's any of us here, Maybe you have not really put your faith in Jesus Christ. I want to really encourage you about this father which Jesus speaks about, who sent his son to come and die for your sins so that you could be reconciled back to him and that you can live in, at peace with your creator. I think that's so important for us to really realize. Second thing that is important about this song, um, it speaks about... I'm going home to die no more. Okay, it's true. In heaven, we're not going to die anymore. There won't be sickness. There won't be coronavirus. I'm told that if you get coronavirus, you lose uh, your taste. Is it true? And uh, your breath. I saw once how it really suppresses your breath. And the one gentleman, it was the first time I saw someone with coronavirus. Up until last week, my younger brother had coronavirus, and he told me it's not a lacquer thing to have, okay? <laughs> but apparently in heaven, there's not going to be this pain and all of that. And so I think it's an amazing thing to, 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 um, to experience when we cross the, this life, when we die. We know we have a security with God, and we are going to a better place. Some of you, you have so many difficult questions for pastors. We don't have, let me tell you the truth, some of the things that you ask us, we don't have the answers to. Questions such as, why do bad things happen to good people? I don't know. <laughs> why did your boyfriend broke up with you? I don't know. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know, you know, and, 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 but the Bible says that when we get to heaven, there's going to be answers to some of these things that you're asking us, and it's going to be so amazing to be in heaven, and I think it's going to be a jolt. There's going to be people of different, it's going to be a different, Kopanong on steroids, okay? People are going to come from different nationalities and everything. I think the worship is even going to be amazing. By the way, the worship was so amazing tonight. I really enjoyed it. While I'm entertaining you, my time is flying. <laughs> but what this song neglects, it neglects to speak about our 
the kingdom that is, has drawn in when Jesus Christ died. Myself and you, when Jesus died on the cross and he was resurrected, his kingdom started to approach us. It started to arise in our hearts. And that is what we were reading in Isaiah chapter 11, verse 1 to 5. His kingdom is not something that we just calling for one day, but it is already is approaching us, which means we can take on the responsibility of the kingdom while we are here on this earth. And I think it's such a privilege to be called a child of God, to be part of his kingdom here right on earth. And that's why I believe there's things for us to do as really shareholders who have a different mindset about the things of God. And there's a difference between a consumer and somebody who takes ownership for the things of God. A consumer is just like, I'm waiting for this home. This beautiful home is really coming, Jesus. Oh, there's going to be such nice lounges in heaven. And there's going to be big screen, big screen TV. We're just going to sit. It's going to be so nice in heaven. But no, no, the Bible says that you've got a lot of responsibilities here while you are on this earth to exercise the kingdom of God and really to enable others to experience God through our lives. How can we live a good life during the coronavirus? Firstly, I believe we need to acknowledge the history of Jesus Christ, and him really rising up from the grave and bringing and ushering the kingdom of God in our lives. And what that basically means, if I understand Isaiah that we read, is that, look, yes, his kingdom is something that is very and very important. But look, we don't have to worry about imposing the kingdom of, of God on this earth, you know? Those Christians that go with on their cars, it's just written big, I am a Christian type of thing. No, no, we don't need to do all of those things. Just by mere fact of us really acknowledging what and knowing what Jesus Christ did on the cross, it means we can be fine about some things. You know, the fact that we don't have the big dumbbell, the <laughs> fact that we are meeting this way, the fact that we're still continuing with his mission, speaking his truth and proclaiming Jesus as king, living our lives with integrity, doing all of those things. It's a small way in which we can still let his kingdom come. No, no, his kingdom is not, you know, and I know wherever where we're going, we are told you must be leaders. Come with broad shoulders, sort situations out. That's not what I read in the Bible. I read about a servant Jesus who came and stood for the right things, and was just there. And sometimes to be a leader means that you support even the things that are right, that you stand for, for justice, and that you really, when, you know, uh, when something is going wrong, that you're really speaking up about it. That's when you are letting that kingdom to manifest in your life. Second thing, we can, how we can have a good life now, meaning exercise the kingdom is we can cooperate with the uh, life-giving spirit of God, who really is, his, his purpose is to co-create and bring hope in the world. I think it's so easy, guys, what we should do. Our responsibility is to bring hope wherever where we're going. It's to really proclaim that wherever there's brokenness, that relationships can be mended. And I'm so proud about you guys because I heard your story. That it's people like you who really makes this kingdom thing to be something that is so true and so tangible. And Isaiah speaks about this servant attitude of Jesus that we just display. That we just go out and we serve wherever we, where we can serve. And I think sometimes we really lock up our, our world by thinking, oh, what did we do before this virus was here? <laughs> then our minds just closes, and we can't be creative in terms of creating this hope which God really wants us 
uh, to, to go out there and do. And what we should really be doing if we want to live this good life during this time that we are living in is we should pray for daily wisdom. Now can I ask you just to be charismatic for one moment and just say daily wisdom. Daily wisdom. Uh, yes. Where there's a leader, there is a mission. And I believe all of you are missionaries that are seated here. And God, if you ask him for wisdom, how to really still be effective during coronavirus, he will give you the wisdom. Because where there is a mission, there is a leader. And where there is a leader, there is a mission. And I want to tell you about the story of a lady who told me how she came to church. And I thought, it is not the conventional Christian way how people normally come to church, but I think somebody thought. All right. <laughs> this lady tells about, she's now a Christian for more than seven years. Somebody said to her, I am going to give you 100 rand if you go to church. And you take a picture with a pastor and the people, and you, you give me the proof that you were at church. And she said she came at church and she realized that, wow. I love it here. The message of that day really spoke to her heart. And she is a Christian to this day. She says she went to get her 100 rent. <laughs> but it was one of the ways in which God gave that particular person wisdom. See, we are not closed off by masks. God can give us wisdom. Unconventional ways of still doing his mission in the absence of every benefit that we had before coronavirus. Am I saying this thing must stay with us? I'm not saying that. By all means, if it can go, it must go. But while we are in it, we are not stopping with this mission. We have to move forward with the mission of God. It is not our mission, it is his mission. You know, we need to think broader than our little missions during this time. The other day, are you ready for another story? I was in a traffic jam. It was about 7 o'clock. And these two guys, guys, the robot just went red. And the guy had already committed. You know when you've committed, you've committed. <laughs> <laughs> and the other guy had already com was also committing because the robot was now green for them. Now these two cars are standing like this. And then, while they are standing like that, it's like 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. And I ask myself, are these adults men with grown beard really stopping the traffic because of their kingdoms that they think they need to protect? I think in order for us to be effective during this time, we need to get over our little agendas our conception of how reality should look like and how it looked like even before coronavirus and adapt and say, Lord, how can we be more creative during this time? It's about serving. You know, Chris knows that um, there was an opportunity for us as Campus Ministry Forum uh, to partner with people that we did not really want to partner with. <laughs> um, gift of the givers. It's, those are not Christians. It's Islam people. They had things to give, but they did not have a place to dispatch those things from. And as a church, we realized, and thank you to Kopanong for opening your, your doors, to say, look, we are just a vehicle which God is using to touch the lives of other people. And sometimes we need to get over our own little worlds, our worlds of preference and comfort and things that we want to do and really step into the things that God wants to do. At the end of the day, it's about feeding the needy. It's not about the name of your church. It's not about your gender. It's not about your whatever. 
It's about God reaching the world to bring transformation in it. My wife has said so many amens. I'm sure she's run out of them. <laughs> I don't know. You know, there's so much opportunity for us to really be effective. You know, there's, I'm not giving suggestions. There's flats out here. They are dirty. Maybe we just need to go and clean one day. Someone will say, why are you doing it? Why are you wasting? No, no. It's God's kingdom. We are taking responsibility for it. We are, we are co-creators with him. We are advocates and agents of hope and bringing healing wherever we can. And that's what we do as children of God. And so I don't know about you, but my time is up. I don't know what your dumbbell is because sometimes we think we need to change a big thing. God says, no, I've put a dumbbell in front of you. It's just a friend that you need to love. And maybe just when you can, lift that dumbbell of the kingdom for God and it will be enough. Maybe it doesn't look the same as how you would have wanted it before coronavirus, but lift the dumbbell for the kingdom. And I believe as you do that, that will be equal to you living the good life, even in this tough coronavirus times that we live in. As I'm closing, what is your dumbbell that God is just reflecting to you that you need to go and lift, bringing that hope, stepping into that situation? Remember, it's not about you and your comfort. It's about his kingdom that we get the privilege to partner with God in. Can I say a prayer for us? Lord, we thank you tonight that when you were ready to send disciples into the world, you did not take the smartest guys, the ones who had all the knowledge in the world and had all the science, but you took men and, and you took women who were fishermen, ordinary people, and you used them, Lord. You said, go to the world and proclaim my kingdom, the good news of the kingdom. And thank you, Lord, that this time where we are standing at, maybe we don't feel worthy to be partakers of your kingdom, but we'll just lift our little hands and say, Lord, if you can use me, I'll be available. And I pray that you see every heart every willingness, every effort, Lord, that we maybe would want to take. And we want to pray for wisdom and creativity. We know we are locked down outside, Lord, but I pray that we will not be locked down on the inside, that your kingdom will burn in our hearts, that we'll just want to run wild for you, Lord, where we can. In Jesus' name. Receive the blessing of the Lord and go and live in His peace. May you be overcome by the presence of the Lord. May you realize that you are walking on holy ground and may you let the kingdom come in Jesus' name.